I want to add a little bit more to this Tochka U missile strike on Kramatorsk, a rail station there that Ukraine and the rest of the West has blamed on Russia. Now they've kind of moved past that. They don't really want to talk about it anymore. And that's because of evidence that is emerging, including a serial number that is just a few digits off of other Tochka U missiles that we know Ukraine has fired at the Donbas region, eastern Ukraine, where uh, separatists have been fighting against the regime in Kiev. Uh, and I want to go back to this BBC article, Kramatorsk Station Attack, What We Know So Far. This was from three days ago. And you can see this section of the missile, and people have asked, how can you tell the difference between a Tochka U missile and an Iskander missile? And I've got a diagram that can help you figure it out. Uh, they have a different truck, eight wheels versus six wheels. It's larger. The Russian Iskander is larger. Uh, the Ukrainian Tochka is smaller. And as you can see, the fins have a length of fuselage behind and ahead of it. There's always a section that survives or usually survives. And you could see the, the length of fuselage before and after. It also has these grid fins, which you can't really see in this diagram, uh, but they look like waffle irons. And this, this is part of the uh, control surfaces. The Iskander does not have it. The fins are all the way to the back. And this section, if you were to find a section of this on the battlefield, would be much larger than what you would find from a Tochka U. So those are some of the differences between an Iskander and a Tochka U missile. And that's how people can tell because you can see the, the grid fins, you can see the length of fuselage before and after the fins. And, uh, and there's also a serial number on it too, uh, just so you know. And by the way, both of these vehicles are made by a company called Baz, B-A-Z. This is in Cyrillic, but uh, I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more here in a moment because Baz makes a whole host of uh, heavy equipment, trucks, transporters of all kinds, and we'll get into that here in just a moment. But I wanna go back to the, the BBC article here and how both sides are trading blame. So here you can see the grid fins. Uh, like I said, they kind of look like waffle irons. And you can see the, the fins and the fuselage behind it and ahead of it. Both sides say Tochka U missiles were used. So in the beginning, Ukraine blamed it on Russia and said it was an Iskander, but obviously it's not. And, and you could tell for all of the reasons that I just mentioned. You can see Kramatorsk is here. You can see Russian held territory in red and contested territory striped here. Uh, was it a deliberate attack that Russia has said that it couldn't be them? because they don't use this type of missile anymore. Ukraine does. And then the BBC says, analysts point to images and videos on social media that appear to show the Russian military using the Tochka U. And when they say using the Tochka U, it makes you think like there's there must be a video of them like raising the missile inside Ukraine and firing it. And no such evidence exists. Not that I've seen so far. Instead, they're talking about this. This is what they're actually talking about. Pictures of these six-wheeled Baz vehicles. In Belarus, they're saying, we saw these six-wheeled Baz vehicles in Belarus. These are usually used to transport Tochka missiles. Therefore, Russia still has Tochka missiles. And that is a very, very weak argument. I'm going to show you some more footage. Uh, this is a, a video of someone else accusing Russia of using Tochka U missiles because they saw these six-wheeled vehicles in Belarus. But do you see any actual missiles? And the answer is no, you don't see. You don't know what is in these vehicles. And this is where I'm going to get into these Baz vehicles. Let me get into that here real quick. It's uh, Baz, manufactures them. That's what they look like. It's a floating wheeled chassis and they're used for all kinds of things. It's a, a self-propelled floating chassis of all combat vehicles, including radar stations and a launcher with missiles and means of communication, navigation, and uh, power supplies. They're used for air defense. They're used for all kinds of things, like carrying a container, for example. That's one carrying a container in the back. Now, if there, there was a cover over this cargo space, how would you know that it was a Tochka U missile launcher or it was gonna carry containers. How can you tell what's inside this by just looking at it from the outside? Here's a whole website with a gallery of these vehicles. 
Yes, there, so there are some carrying missiles, but then there's others that have totally different purposes like this one. If this mast was retracted and you couldn't see it, how would you know that that was in there instead of a Tochka U missile? Here's another image of it. There's, there's some other equipment. And, and so there was a whole host of uses for these vehicles. They're amphibious, they're sturdy, they have a lot of them. You could use them for all kinds of things. Yeah, and also Tochka missile launchers. You could also use them for air defense and radar stations, as that other website pointed out. And you can see pictures of these online. And, and this video that you're looking at right now on the screen, this is from YouTube. This is someone in Russia just messing around with one of these. Maybe it's uh, in their collection or something. And I can guarantee you there's not a Tochka U missile in the back. So just seeing a six-wheeled Baz vehicle in Belarus is not conclusive evidence that Russia is still using Tochka U missiles. Show me the missile. Show me the actual missile. I want to see it. I want to see those fins. I want to see the grid fins. And then I might think that maybe Russia is still employing them in some way, but you still need to place it in Ukraine and you still need to place it in the probable area it would have to be to have fired this missile. Why is that? Uh, let's go back to the source that the BBC itself cited. Open source intelligence account on Twitter, this uh, conflict intelligence team with 85.6 thousand followers, the BBC chose to include this part of their analysis, but they left out this part. This is a diagram that they made to point out where it could have come from. The reason why is because this section of the missile will fall first and then the warhead will continue on to the target. And then it's just a process of lining it up to figure out where it came from. And by doing that, you can approximate where you think that it came from. And so this is them doing that. And the vast majority of possible launch sites are in Ukrainian held territory, not Russian or separatist held territory. And even the small slither that they somehow uh, managed to include in there, it's at the maximum range of the missile's capability is very unlikely that that's where it was fired from. That's, this is where the serial number comes in. This is a still image from a, Italian media. They photographed and videotaped it. And you can find many other images of this from the Kramatorsk missile strike and you could see the number is this is basically the equivalent of sh91579 sh91579 sh91566 and this other example is from 2015 this is a missile that was fired at the donetsk people's republic they are the ones who found this and filmed it. The video is here. I will include the video in the video description below. And uh, they filmed the serial number. What do you think the chances are that these two Tochka U missiles uh, were fired years apart from each other with such similar serial numbers? It's extremely obvious who the probable, most probable culprit was. Ukraine. They have been doing this for eight years. They've been firing Tochka U missiles at the Donbas region for eight years. Kramatorsk is in the Donbas region. It is a region that when this is all said and done will be fully incorporated into the Donbas region, into the Donetsk and Luhansk republics. And this was Ukraine firing missiles at, at a region that they have been firing missiles at for eight years. This was a missile that Ukraine has and has operated th all throughout this conflict for the last eight years. I have not seen any evidence at all that Russia has had any Tochka U missiles inside of Ukraine. I, I haven't seen any evidence of it at all. The, the closest thing that the West can do to refute this or put doubt into the minds of people trying to make sense of this is point to six wheeled uh, Baz vehicles in Belarus. It's, it's not a very strong argument uh, uh, compared to the, the serial numbers that we're talking about here and the fact that Ukraine has been doing this. And I, I wanna point out this one from March 15th, 2022. This is Patrick Lancaster. He's in the middle of Donetsk, uh, the city center and Ukraine fired one of these missiles right at the city center. Now this uh, serial number is, does not come very close to matching, but this is what Ukraine has been doing for years to the Donbas region. This is what they've been doing. 
They did it in March. Uh, they shot it into the middle of Donetsk town center. It killed all of these people. Now they fired one into the middle of a, a railroad station and killed a bunch of innocent people. This is what they've been doing. This is why people in Donbass have taken up weapons. This is why Russia intervened in the first place. There needs to be an investigation, and the fact that the West is not interested speaks volumes. Just like in Bucha, outside of Kiev. If you think that this is a slam dunk case against Russia, why wouldn't you open an independent investigation and prove it? Especially when there's a missile with a serial number, you could track it down to a particular unit, and you could get a specific Russian commander on trial for war crimes. Why wouldn't you go for that? Because you have zero confidence that it was Russia. That's why. That's why you would do that. That's why you would move on to the next story and pretend like this didn't happen. And rest assured, with absolute confidence, that the Western public, who still tunes into the Western media, are thoroughly convinced that it was Russia because they don't ask questions. They don't demand information or facts. They don't care what the difference is between an Iskander and a uh, Tochka U missile is. They don't care what the difference is. They don't care what a Baz vehicle is and how many different ways it has been used, uh, both in military service in Russia and also in civilian service. I will point out these facts. I will share with you this information. I have no power to initiate any sort of investigation. This is the best I can do. If you thought this video was useful, please like it, share it widely subscribe it helps the channel grow it's free to do if you're watching this on youtube please check the video description below for other places you can find my work in case i'm deleted off of youtube i'm also on odyssey i'm also on rumble i'm very active on telegram this is a social media platform it's beyond the control of the us to just delete people off of it and i'm very active there i share my videos which from whichever platform i end up using i share articles and i share daily observations so please join me on telegram uh, the, all the links to this will be in the video description below also in the video description below will be all of the links to all of the articles and videos that i've just discussed including that video with the boz six-wheeled transporter uh taking a spin in a lake somewhere i think in russia also in the video description are ways you can help support my work you can do that through buy me a coffee Patreon and PayPal to everyone who has been contributing either month to month or one-time donations, or even if you're just helping share my articles, sending kind words, sending news tips. I appreciate all of that help. Thank you so much. And as always, thank you for watching.